let's take a look at some more identities. Today we're going to look at the double angle identities. In fact, you're going to make them. Okay, and the way that we're going to make them is by using our songs, our sum and different songs. So sine of 2x is really sine of x plus x. So what I would like for you to do is sing a song, work this out so we can make the double angle identity. So how does this go? Sine, cosine, cosine, sine. So let's do sine of x, cosine of x, plus cosine of x times sine of x. And so really, what is this saying here? This is saying m n plus n m. Are those like terms? Can they be added together? Absolutely. That's two, and it doesn't matter what order you put them in, m n. So that is what we have here. We have a sine and a cosine and a sine and a cosine. And they're all of x, so these can be combined into two sine of x times cosine of x. That is the double angle identity. And all that means is because the angles are x and x, it came from our song. Okay, so when in doubt, in a pinch, you could always make these. Okay, cosine of 2x, let's do it again. Let's sing a cosine song for x plus x. The cosine song goes, cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So let's switch through to minus, sine, sine, and the angles are x, 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 x. <laughs> They're all x. So how does this simplify? Cosine of x times cosine of x is cosine squared of x. Two cosines, they're all of x. And then same thing here, minus sine squared of x. And so there you go. Now, I know that you were wondering, well, what are we going to put in all these other ones? There's three versions. This version is pretty useful when you're calculating, but you're going to see how later in the chapter we're going to need these other ones for other things, and so I'm going to show you how to make two more. Let's take cosine squared of x, and we're going to replace him with something, minus sine squared of x. If I say cosine squared, what can I put in here? Rearrange the identity, and that would be 1 minus sine squared of x. So 1 minus sine squared of x minus sine squared of x. Here's another version. 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. Hopefully you can understand where I'm getting these from and how we're making them. So if you ever are in a pinch, you could do this yourself. Let's do again. Let's take cosine squared, but let's replace sine squared with something else. So I put the minus sign out there, and I'm using parentheses like I should. Sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared of x. And so let's go ahead and distribute that there. Uh, that's going to make a negative, but cosine squared is positive, so it's 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. Three identities that are all the double angle formula for cosine. Of the three of these, I'm going to do a lot of calculations with this one, and we do promise you'll see why. They're all good. I think this one's just the easiest one to use for today, but in a couple of days, we're going to need these other ones too, especially when we're solving. Okay. The last identity here is tangent of 2x, and let's go ahead and do tangent of x plus x. If you have a cool song for that, you can sing that one, but it's got that huge fraction. And it goes tangent of x plus tangent of x divided by 1 minus tangent of x times tangent of x. So this formula has a lot of tangents in it. The numerator is going to be 2 times tangent of x divided by 1 minus tangent squared of x. And there is the double angle formula for tangent. Okay. Make sure every night you fill out the formula card, adding in the formulas that we learn each day. It's very important that you get familiar with them. The sooner the better. Okay. So we're going to do with some double angle formulas here. We have alpha, and alpha is in quadrant 1. So let's draw a nice picture that we could use. Alpha is in quadrant 1. Remember, into the quadrant, straight down to the x-axis, alpha goes by the origin. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So let's put a 3 
on the opposite leg, five on the hypotenuse. Oh, this is nice. This is a three, four, five. Okay, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to do some double angle work. So let's go over here to our, our problems. Sine of 2 alpha. Using the double angle rule for sine of the double. So if this is where alpha is, and I made that angle twice as big, the triangle would be somewhere else. What would the sine value be? So let's use the formula. It says 2 sine of our variable, which is alpha, times cosine of our variable, alpha. So all I need to do to finish this calculation is figure out what the sine of a regular alpha is and the cosine of a regular alpha. And luckily, you have a great picture right there to look at. The sine of alpha is 3 over 5. The cosine of alpha is 4 over 5. This 2 can be thought of as 2 over 1. And so our final answer is... 12 times 2, 24 over 25. Not bad. All right, let's do a cosine. The cosine formula that I'm going to use is this first one here, and it says cosine squared of your x, or in our case of our regular alpha, minus sine squared of our regular alpha. So if you want to know what the cosine is of an angle twice his size, We'll have to do these calculations with the regular alpha. Okay, let's get some parentheses here. Cosine squared minus a sine squared. So of the three formulas, some people think it's easier to do calculations when it's just a sine value or just a cosine. I like this one because they're both squared, and you're going to see how common denominators come built in. So cosine is 4 over 5 and sine is 3 over 5, and so this makes 16 over 25 minus 9 over 25, and so I know I had to do a cosine and a sine, but it comes with built-in common denominators, which makes my problem real easy, and it's 7 over 25. Okay, we've got one more here to do, and that's the tangent. The tangent rule says uh, 2 times tangent of a single alpha, 1 minus tangent squared of alpha. Okay, to figure out the double angle, we'll use the regular alpha angle, the single alpha picture here. So I have to figure out tangent, put it right there, 1 minus the tangent fraction squared there. And what is tangent of alpha? Opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be 3 fourths. And again, three-fourths. All right, let's do some work here. Three times two divided by four is three-halves. And in the denominator, I've got one minus nine-sixteenths. Okay, a couple things here. How do you deal with fractions easily? I'm going to give you some pointers to make it a lot easier. So I'm going to change one. 16 over 16. You can see why I'm making common denominators there. In fact, I'm going to make a common denominator with the 16 up here, too. I'm going to multiply by 8 over 8. Oh, Mrs. Breitek, why are you making so many common denominators? We've got 24 with the denominator of 16. Here I've got 7 with the denominator of 16. And my answer to you is, well, I made so many denominators 16 because a denominator can cancel nice with a denominator. And our final answer is 24 over 7. Okay, that was nice. And now I need to ask you to maybe make a couple of observations. Okay, sometimes doing this calculation is necessary. But when I say tangent, what do you think? Sine over cosine. Yeah, that's what I think. Tangent of 2 alpha is sine of 2 alpha divided by cosine of 2 alpha. Wait, are you telling me if I've already calculated the sine of the double and the cosine of the double that I could just take this answer and divide it by this answer to make tangent? Absolutely. 
sine over cosine, the 25s would cancel. That's another way to do these. If you've already calculated the sine and cosine of that angle, you could quickly find the tangent for that angle. All right, let's keep that trick in mind. All right, the next one here. Uh, we've got an angle. Alpha is in quadrant 2. So let's go ahead and draw a picture for alpha into quadrant 2, straight to the x-axis. There he is. And tangent is negative 1 seventh. Who's going to get the negative? Is the 1, the 7, or both of them? Well, I don't want to put a negative on something going up. I'll put it on the 7. And now it's time for Pythagorean Theorem. 1 squared plus, let's use parentheses, negative 7 squared equals c squared. And so I've got 1 plus 49 equals c squared. So c is radical 50. But that does simplify. It simplifies into 25 times 2, 5, radical 2. So the hypotenuse can be thought of as radical 50, but the simplified version is 5, radical 2. All right, we'll see what's easier in cases. Okay, let's do a sine, a double angle sine. Does anyone have the formula memorized yet? Or maybe you can think of a sine, cosine, cosine, sine. That's going to make 2 sine alpha, cosine alpha. If you want to know the double angle, let's use the single angle, more complicated, and we'll get the answer. So let's do 2 times the sine times the cosine. Looking at your picture, what's the sine of alpha? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. 1 over, hmm, I think it might be easier to use radical 50. What? Well, let's see. Cosine is negative 7 over radical 50. Oh, but now we got to do radical 50 times radical 50. Oh, perfect. That makes a regular 50. So we've got negative 14 over a plain 50, which cancels into negative 7 over 25. Okay, so sometimes that one might be easier. Sometimes the original one will cancel more nicely if you just leave it full in your calculations. Now let's try cosine. That uh, formula that I like to use is cosine squared of alpha minus sine squared of alpha. Okay, so you've got to put the cosine answer there and square it, the sine value square it, and we'll be on our way. What's the cosine of alpha? Negative 7 over, do you want to use 5 radical 2 or radical 50? I think we should use radical 50 because then it's going to get squared. Yeah, that's going to make my life easier. And sine would be 1 over radical 50. Okay, so let's square things. That's going to be 49 over 50 minus 1 over 50, which is... 24 over 25. Nice. Okay. And we could use that tangent formula again. Or, how many of you are thinking, let's try the trick. Tangent of 2 alpha is sine of 2 alpha divided by cosine of 2 alpha. So if I take the sine answer, which is negative 7 over 25, and divide by 24 over 25. Denominators cancel with denominators, and we get negative 7 over 24. For fun, if you would like to try the tangent formula, you'll get the same thing. I think in our homework tonight, you're going to actually have to use the formula, though, for practice. Okay, last one. We've got our angle between pi and 3 pi over 2. Pi is right here. 3 pi over 2 is here. So let's draw our angle in quadrant 3. Here's our triangle. Alpha is right there. Tangent is 4 over 5. Why don't you go ahead and give these a try? Fill out the triangle. Use the trick. Use the formulas. And I can't wait to see what you get.